All right. Um, thank you, uh, Senator, for um, uh, agreeing to do an interview with me. Uh, I'm, my name is Max Muskreach. I'm from a tiny country, the Netherlands. Uh, so to me, it's a big privilege uh, to get to talk to uh, the uh, Senator uh, who uh, dares to address the UAP phenomenon. Uh, I'm basically the only guy uh, up until now who covers it in my country. Um, but, uh, you know, we are getting some attention now. Uh, so let me kick this off by asking you this question about a current interview with former President Barack Obama. Um, he was on a talk show uh, with James uh, Corden and actually um, disclosed he knows about the UAP phenomenon. And I was wondering... Uh, because you have close ties with the former President Obama. Did you guys ever talk about that? Sure, we certainly have, yes. And uh, could you tell me uh, what it was you, you would uh, discuss with uh, uh, President Obama at the time? Well, I think it'd be appropriate just to say that we discussed the subject of UFOs and uh, without going into the conversation, I don't think it would be fair to the President. Uh, and I, we had a good discussion, and he's uh, someone who understands what we're trying to find out, and that is more. Yes. Um, in, in previous interviews, uh, the president always uh, uh, reacted in a humorous way. Uh, he didn't disqualify it. He just made a joke, you know, that, like uh, I think it was with uh, either Jimmy Kimmel. He said, yeah, the aliens are very demanding, but now... Um, he actually <laughs> said, you know, this is a real thing. You know, we don't know what it is. Um, is that still the status quo uh, we are in now? We don't know what it is? Or do we know a little bit more? I think we're learning more all the time. But we have so much more to learn. What we do know is that we have UFOs. Um, and we're now, because of the Pentagon... We're now having our pilots and our sea captains disclose when they have these unusual sightings. I think that's a big step forward because in the past they've been pressured not to get into these areas of, of UFOs. But now uh, they're now making reports on this and I think that's a really a good way to go. Transparency in all government is important. American people need to know and what they need to know what we don't know. And I think that's, if we keep on that line and thought we're going to be okay. Where we run into trouble is where people <clears throat> simply refuse to talk about it or say it's classified or, you know, you can't hide, you can't hide government. I believe in transparency. Yes. Um, so now a, a question, when uh, you got notice of this phenomenon, was it the letter you received from uh, Robert Bigelow when the, the, was that the first time you learned about the UAP phenomenon? I first learned about this uh, from a television reporter, at CBS TV in Las Vegas. And he said to me, there's this program today. Uh, why don't you come and take a look at it? So I went and it was uh, in... Uh, Bigelow had put it on. It was a, a large conference room and they had a lot of academics, a lot of interested people and a few oddballs. But it was really an eye opener to me that there were people were actually willing to talk about this. And that was the beginning of, of my interest in UFOs, was George Knapp inviting me to a meeting. Yeah. Um... Senator, uh, you have been in government uh, for a long, long, long time. Uh, ha ha were you aware of projects like uh, Project Grudge, Project Sign, Blue Book before uh, you you received yes, you you I went? Was, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. And what was your feeling about that then? To be honest with you, it didn't arouse any curiosity. Uh, I did. Uh, Bigelow sent me a bunch of stuff to read after having attended that meeting in his, his office. And I found that uh, 
scintillating. I found it interesting and uh, it gave me a better knowledge of what we don't know. Okay. Um, so what was it that convinced you, uh, Bigelow showed you that this is a real thing and um, to keep pursuing that? Well, I came to the conclusion that there, we certainly have UFOs, no question about that. So I'm over, oh, I got over that hurdle. Once I got over that hurdle, I was interested in how many sightings have there been? And that's where I got the money, uh, $22 million of government money to look into this. Now, I didn't know what we would come up with. I thought they would maybe have sightings of 40, 50, 60 people. But after the study, we found that there were hundreds and hundreds of different sightings uh, and they weren't done by a lot of uh, weirdos, oddballs. <laughs> uh, they were done by people who are actually trying to find out what they were. And I was impressed with that. And uh, that's why we learned it wasn't just a few people that were reporting these things, but hundreds and hundreds of people. Yes, and, and was it just uh, witness accounts or was the, were there some data? Well, a little of both, but the, what I was interested in is the actual sightings of people who were, who were objective. They were people who uh, weren't uh, trying to have some conspiracy, conspiracy theory. But no. I was impressed with the fact that people were doing some real good work scientifically, the best they can. For example, uh, Helene Cooper, New York Times, she called me and said that she'd like to do a story on this. Uh, and I said to her, if you're looking for a little green man, I can't help you. But if you want to <laughs> talk to me about science, I'm happy to do that. She stuck by her gun. She talked science. And that was the opening and nationally the New York Times, which is the most well-read newspaper in the world. Um, yeah. And they started talking about the subject. It became more credible for others to talk about. And sir, when you talk about the science, the science, you know, you, you, you got under your eyes. What, what, what can I, uh, what kind of science are you uh, talking about? Uh, could you elaborate on that a little bit? We have now reams of evidence of these sightings taking place. We have, for example, in one of our missile uh, silos in the Dakotas, uh, they look up in the sky and there's an object hovering above them. And interesting to think about the original interesting thing to think about is that the whole communications of this missile silo was shut down. Uh, mm. Those are facts. Uh, and so the, those are the kind of things that uh, really give you pause because there's uh, unidentified flying objects uh, and we're trying to figure out what they are. And at this stage, we don't know. Yes, sir. Yeah, there is a clear pattern uh, which is, you know, getting more known, uh, a worldwide pattern that these things, whatever they are, um, are taking down nuclear weapons all over the world. Um, would you uh, say uh, this is a national threat? Was this the reason you uh, wanted the government? International. A international threat um, but the behavior doesn't look very um, how do you say um, they're, they're not they're just taking down really dangerous weapons and they don't seem to harm anyone are they harmless all the information I have uh, which is quite a bit 
I think there's been <laughs> no indication whatsoever that they're uh, harmful. Exactly. Well, uh, sir. Not kind, of, kind of scary, to be honest with you, but not, uh, we have no indication of there being reason to be afraid of them. Yeah, but they're still unknown, and the unknown is always a little bit scary, I think. Uh, I, think <laughs> you know? it's a, I think it's big time scary. Exactly. Um, another question, sir. Um, there are some accounts of um, Lockheed Martin um, being in possession of uh, extraterrestrial debris. I know you have, have in fact, tried to um, you know, get into uh, that information and you were for some reason denied. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Do you know for a fact they have extraterrestrial I debris? Thought, I thought that, uh, I thought that uh, if they had something there, I'd want to see it. And so I went through the hoops necessary to get clearance and they wouldn't give it to me. Now, I'm not too sure that that would be the same answer today. Maybe it would be, but I think we've made a lot of headway uh, since that time of making sure that there's transparency in everything we do in government. I have a um, question about this, this situation. It looks like we are advancing technologically very fast as humankind at this moment. You know, uh, our, and it, you know it, it really speeds up, you know, uh, what we are being able to do that right now technologically as, as humans. Do, do you think there is a correlation between what Lockheed Martin might or might not have and our advances in technology? I think that there's no question that we're advancing in technology in many different parts of the scientific world. Uh, and I repeat what I said before, I think this is something the government must be transparent with. And I'm not sure they have been. Uh, okay. And I think that uh, this is something that America must do because as I've indicated, Putin was head of the KGB, he had 30,000 agents working for him. So we know that he's looking into all this stuff. Uh, we know that China's looking into this. We know that France is looking into this. And I think that we have to stay on top of it, as far as I'm concerned, with the United States government. You cannot let this go without some continual evaluation of what's up. And sir, why do you think that within the government there's such a contradiction between people who want to be transparent and uh, a part that doesn't want to be transparent? Now, I've talked to Mr. Louis, Louis Elizondo and he said um, there, he asked one officer or one uh, senior uh, uh, officer one time, um, you know, why won't we investigate this? And the man said, uh, because Mr. Elizondo, we already know what it is. And, you know, this has been uh, in the media a lot lately. And he said it was demons. Now, when someone says that, I think immediately, are we... Uh, having resistance because it messes with religion and uh, life as we know it. So um, is it the religious resistance? The answer, the answer is a very, very big yes. I think that uh, our ability to let the American people know what we know is way behind times. I think we have, we do not have enough transparency and you know, we have great scientists, astrophysicists. One man by the name of Loeb wrote a book on it uh, within the past six months. And it was interesting. He had, a, he had a theory in his book he wrote that we have had um, messages from another world. Now, I don't know if he's right or where he's wrong, but I think it's good that we have people looking into these. As I said, he's an astrophysicist. He understands a lot about uh, science that I don't know, but I think that uh, we're, we, we're making some headway. Okay. Now, uh, Senator, 
Uh, you uh, were one of the founders of Project ATIP, uh, or maybe the founder. Um, ha has there been some of the investigations or what they found? Ha did they share that with you? And did you ever um, encounter anything that you would qualify as... Uh, alien or UAP or something you had never ever seen before? No, I haven't uh, seen anything that I can't explain with my basic scientific knowledge. Uh, so my next question is, um, there have been multiple programs in the past, like Blue Book, uh, Grudge, uh, but also OSAP uh, and now ATIP or uh, the UAP task force. Could it be that there have been programs running parallel without them knowing about each other's investigations and not communicating with each other? The answer, yeah, the answer is yes. <clears throat> That's one of the problems we have. We need correlation. We need to know what someone else is doing so we don't duplicate. Because there's certainly enough questions that need to be answered. We don't need people doing the same thing. Exactly. Um, okay. Could you tell me why uh, ATIP uh, spent money investigating uh, Mr. Bigelow's Skinwalker Ranch? To my knowledge, uh, there, was, there was a program, government-directed program, looking at Skinwalker Ranch. I don't I don't know of any money spent from ATIP in that program at all. But there's been, Bigelow has spent a lot of his own money uh, looking into what goes on at Skinwalker Ranch. But I am yes. uh, more interested in basic science than the uh, strange strangeness that some people feel they have when they go to the walk Skinwalker Ranch. That is not my yeah. area of expertise. And I think that's... Uh, something that is beneficial to us. Okay, uh, thank you for that answer. Um, do you have uh, any idea why the Pentagon denied you um, access to the, um, uh, uh, sorry, um, Lockheed Martin uh, UFO uh, thing? The, the, have, you, have you ever heard an answer to that? Why you? I think that they were afraid because no matter what answer I got, it would be like, are you, are you still beating your wife? Uh, no matter what the answer was, it wouldn't reflect well on the Pentagon. Okay. Um, let me see. Um... If you would uh, advise a journalist like me, Um, what topic uh, should I pursue on this phenomenon and where um, should I start to make an effort to find important information? I think the first thing that someone's interested in this subject should do is <clears throat> gather all the information that you pick up on the internet and other places and then <clears throat> find out after having done that Uh, what is going on so there's not duplication of what's ha happening. I think this is a field that's ripe for a journalist to uh, separate the fact from fiction because a lot of the stuff that is coming out on the internet now is conspiratorial theories and uh, religion gets mixed up in it all. And I think that uh, if I were a journalist, I would make sure that what is being studied and what is being given to the American public is something that is credible. Yes, sir. Um, well, in the past, a lot of things that were, um, you know, uh, disqualified as, you know, the occult or, or uh, paranormal turned out to be true as, as the, like the, the Roswell crash or the uh, Los Angeles incident in 1942. Um, in fact, they turned out to be true. Um, do you think there is Roswell debris 
in the hands of the United States government or from another incident before or after? Well, you know, uh, as we're talking our conversation this morning, I tried to find out and was turned down. Now, at the time, I wasn't uh, the leader of the Senate. I was just an individual senator. Uh, and I think that uh, withholding whatever information Lockheed has is not good for the country, if in fact they have any. Yes, sir. Um, have you ever been briefed uh, on a crash before you uh, received uh, Mr. Bigelow's letter in your time working for the U.S. government. Was this ever discussed before? What I did when I read that letter from the Defense Intelligence Agency is I called that man. I didn't want to come to my home, didn't want to go to his office, so I came to my home. And he was a PhD physicist. He was very logical. And basically what he said, I know where rockets are today. I know where they started. I know where they ended up. So I understand rocketry well. But what I don't understand is these unidentified flying objects. And that's where we need to do more work. And I believe that he was right. I still believe he's right. And I think that uh, we need to move along on this and do everything we can to continue the study. It's, there's interest in stimulated. The American people are curious. They want to know more. And I think that uh, we should put all guns aboard and just move forward on this in any way we can. I think the government should spend more money than the, my ATIP money. Uh, there's, a lot of work that needs to be done. And the American people deserve to know what we know and what we don't know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, could you tell me anything about the story that you and um, the late Senator McCain uh, that you uh, ever discussed? Uh, 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 what is going on with the U.O.? <clears throat> two, two conversations with him. Senators, senators. One was John Glenn, and it was a not. We didn't sit down and talk for an hour. You know, little bits and pieces here and there. And basically, what I said, what do you think of this UFO stuff? He said, we need to look into it. And there, it's hard to find a pilot any place who's been in the air a long time that hasn't seen one of these identified unidentified flying objects up close. Uh, so I think that uh, talking to John was interesting to me. John, John McCain uh, was curious about what I knew. We talked about this, a uh, couple of uh, political, uh, what's the right word? Junkies, I guess, political junkies talking about stuff. And I think that... Uh, if you can get John McCain and Harry Reid direct opposites politically to agree to talk about something in some detail, I think it's good for the country. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, now, um, a lot of footage has been uh, disclosed by the Pentagon, officially by the Pentagon, but, you know, in fact, it was uh, Mr. Elizondo. Um, and he got a lot of uh, resistance. They tried to discredit him. And you decided, you know, to jump in and, um, you know, protect his integrity and actually showing uh, Mr. Elizondo did what he did, was who he is and, uh, you know, did a great job. Um, what I made you... How, I thought how Lou Elizondo was treated by the Pentagon was awful. I think that uh, it didn't speak well of our government and... That's why I wrote that letter to show that he was not a, some kind of a kook. He was somebody who was, had a good career in the military. He's been seeing the overt, options, overt operations of the government. And I think that he's uh, a credible person. And I think glad that we were able to give him some running room so he can continue his uh, working on the subject. 
Yes, uh, I think uh, Mr. Elizondo is an incredible man. Um, now, um, the, in, in the in, Inspector General is involved with the ongoing investigation um, by the UAP task force. Why do you think the Inspector General decided to uh, start monitoring and jump in this investigation? I think that speaks well of the government. We have uh, the, every, every federal, federal agency has someone just like the man looking into what's going on with the task force. And I think that's very good. Uh, these uh, people who are in the credentials to look at anything they want. They're one of the few areas in government that basically has no supervision control. The Inspector General in any of our departments has free reign to look any place they want. And I'm glad they're taking a look at this task force because uh, I don't want it to get off base. I want it to be something that continues to be incredible. <clears throat> yes, sir. Now, the ultimatum uh, made by the Congress is going to end soon uh, in, in less than four weeks, I think. Now, what do you expect is going to yes. come out? I just don't know. That's why I'm glad the Inspector General is trying to direct this so that it's, when it comes out, it has some degree of determining what is being looked at and why it should be looked at this way and not that way. Okay. And what are your expectations? I hope what they come up with is something that uh, will be helpful and put some finality on this rather than keep stalling it. I think it needs to be done. And I think uh, that having uh, the Inspector General involved in this is going to make it a much better report. Yes, sir. Now, there is a elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room uh, was uh, the latest disclosed footage by uh, filmmaker and my friend Jeremy Corbell, the Triangle videos from uh, At Sea. Uh, now, um, there is this... Those things that went into the ocean, right? Oh, yeah, that one too. Yes, of course. But, the yes. yes. And uh, you, you uh, well, there's this miscommunication or a misperception about uh, a comment of yours on that, um, that you uh, uh, claimed that it could be Russian drones. Was that actually what you meant to say or was it just a, an option? It was one of the things that had been uh, talked about, and I mentioned that in my response. I don't know. I don't know. There's been some suggestion that there are a bunch of Russian drones, but that's sheer speculation at this stage. Okay, sir. Thank you for that explanation. Um, let me see. Uh, Mr. Louis Elizondo, uh, in my latest interview with him, uh, we talked about the different shapes of UAPs that are noticed in the skies. So uh, you see triangles, you see cigars or discs. Now, he explained to me that all of these actually have a function, but they also seem to merge into one vehicle. And that's when you got the triangle. Have you ever um, seen or have you ever uh, heard Louis explain that to you? Because it was amazing to me. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think that his explanation is in intriguing. I think that uh, we have situation where uh, we are trying to figure out how th this can happen because there are different ways they're described. Number one is they are shaped like a saucer. Um, yes. There are indications that they have no uh, plume of smoke or air coming out of the bottom of them or anyplace else. They are sometimes they're have bright lights with them, flashing lights. Uh, so we really don't know uh, because 
you, there, you, people are explaining them in different ways. But we do know they're yes. unidentified. We know they're flying objects. And I think that uh, the more people know about this, the more sad it will be. And I repeat for the fourth or fifth time in this conversation with you and me, we need government transparency. We can't be hiding things from the American people. Yes, sir. Um, now, I think Katie is uh, texting me. Um, I she. Should, I should, should say this. Let me just say this. Not the American yes, sir. people. Everybody. That's why I'm glad to have a conversation with you. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I'm, uh, it's, it's an honor and a privilege. Now, before we finish this interview, and I'm just going to be very um, cheeky, is there anything we do not know yet you could disclose to me and um, our Dutch and worldwide audience? No, I don't think so. I think that uh, every day that goes by, we're all learning a little bit more. I think that's what it should be, and we should continue along that path. Before we get off the show, this is totally off the subject, but uh, one of my best friends is... Uh, Dutch. He's a uh, good friend, uh, Walter Roth. And we talk about Amsterdam and the uh, dikes and all that's mm -hmm. fascinating. You come from a great country. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, well, I think our time is up. And I really would love to thank you for doing this for us. And uh, it was an honor and a privilege to me. And maybe if you are open to it, we can do this sometime again. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And um, well, enjoy your day.